Switching to Geico is a good idea, especially when you consider everything. First off, Geico makes it easy to switch. They have licensed agents available 24-7 online or over the phone. But if it's so easy, you might start thinking everything is easy, even big wave surfing. And it's not. It's actually quite difficult. Well, if you switch to Geico, you could save hundreds on car insurance. And you could keep saving by bundling your motorcycle, boat, and RV, plus your home or renter's insurance. But saving money might lead you to make some questionable purchases, like a 20-foot feather boa. And do you know how hard it is to clean a 20-foot feather boa? Well, they do have an industry-leading mobile app you can use to pay your bill, file and manage a claim, or add a new driver. But when life gets a little easier, it makes you too confident. And you start calling everyone ace. And you're better than that. Well, Geico has a 97% customer satisfaction rating and has been saving people money for 85 years. It's hard to beat that. But you're right. Switch to Geico. It's obviously a good idea. Welcome, readers. Today on Book Chat, joining me is my Buddy Reads co-host, Classy Green. We'll be discussing Hairpin Bridge, written by Taylor Adams. Stay tuned. Today's episode is sponsored in part by Amazon Music. Check it out. It has 70 million songs, thousands of playlists. You can listen without commercials. Sign up today and get your first month for free using the Shelf Addiction link. Go to getamazonmusic.com forward slash shelf addiction and sign up today. Again, the code is Shelf Addiction. The link is also in the show notes. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and thank you for downloading this month's Buddy Read discussion featured here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. If you're new here, every week we get bookish with book discussions, book reviews, shelf bites, and more. If you're wondering what is a Buddy Read, this is a feature where Classy and I select a thriller or mystery title that we both are interested in. Then we have a candid conversation about that book or audiobook. We even discuss it in our Facebook group, Shelf Addiction Official, joining a live chat. So grab a glass of wine, a cocktail, a cup of tea or coffee, whatever your drink of choice is, and settle in for this fun discussion. As always with book chats, there is a spoiler alert in effect, so you've been warned. If you enjoyed today's episode, please support this podcast by sharing it with your book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. That will really help me out and I appreciate you for doing it. The uncut video version of this podcast is available now on Patreon. Join us there for exclusive videos, including this podcast after show. If you'd like to support the show in other ways, please consider doing that by supporting our sponsors. By supporting them, you are supporting us. Check out all of the sponsors at shelfaddiction.com forward slash sponsors. If you've read the book or listened to the audio book and would like to weigh in on this conversation, be sure to join the Facebook group Shelf Addiction Official. I hope to hear your thoughts on this discussion. Links for everything I've mentioned are in the show notes, so let's get going. We have a lot to cover today, so we are going to jump right on in. Joining me is the Buddy Read feature co-host, Classy Green, from the Bookish Virtual Assistant. Welcome back, Classy. Thanks, Tamara. How are you this evening? I'm doing fabulous. How are you? I'm doing okay. Can't complain. Yeah, same. Another day, another book. (laughs) Wish it was a good book, but yes. Oh, I know, right? (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay, so before we start that discussion, if you are interested in today's after show, head on over to Patreon and watch it. It's available right now. We are also talking about some latest book news and more. So today, today we are discussing the book Hairpin Bridge, written by Taylor Adams, published June 15th, 2021, by William Morrow. The hardcover comes in at 306 pages. The unabridged audio length is nine hours and 51 minutes, narrated by Lulu Lamb and Sophie Amos. Classy, would you kindly share the synopsis? Sure. Three months ago, Lena Nguyen's strange twin sister, Cambry, drove to a remote bridge 60 miles outside of Missoula, Montana, Montana, excuse me, and jumped 200 feet to her death. At least that is what the official police version says, but it isn't buying it. Now she's come to that very bridge, driving her dead twin sister's car and armed with a cassette recorder, determined to find out what really happened by interviewing the highway patrolman who allegedly discovered her sister's body. Corporal Raymond Rachevich has agreed to meet Lena at the scene. 
He is sympathetic, forthright, and professional, but his story doesn't seem to add up. For one thing, he stopped Cambry for speeding a full hour before she supposedly leapt to her death. Then there are 16 attempted 911 calls from her cell phone, made in what was unfortunately a dead zone. But perhaps most troubling of all, the state trooper is referred to by name in Cambry's final ignatic text to her sister. Please forgive me. I couldn't live with it. Hopefully you can't, Officer Rayovic. Lena will do anything to uncover the truth, but as her twin sister's final hours come into focus, Lena turns into a harrowing to the nail fight for her own survival, one that will test everything she thought she knew about her sister and herself. Right. The nail. <sighs> okay, so... um. Yeah, we've done this one thing before, and I think it would be fun to do again. It's like going to be no no prep time. One sentence or, you know, a couple of words. What okay. did you think of this book? Um, One sentence. One sentence. <laughs> too many words. Too many words. Okay. Use too, yeah, too many words. I'm going to even have a shorter sentence. <laughs> news fast oh. yes. amen <laughs> i concur now, yeah so now we can dig into why we have these dramatic feelings because you guys we read taylor adams before we read him in 2019 and we enjoyed no exit loved it we had high hopes for this we were all excited like hey Yay! And um, yeah, yeah, male author that can write great female protagonists, strong, kick-ass, badass female protagonists. Mm. She was semi kick-ass. Lena was like fun. She was fun to read in the the respect that she had some unexpected tricks up her sleeve. So, like, she knew she was going to confront her sister's killer. She just knew it. So she was like, she had the war paint on. (laughs) She had the secret weapon. She was ready, like, to go to war, right? Right. She was ready. And that preparedness, I appreciate, because there is no way she could have survived that without it. No. The target practice, the, the bulls, you know, how she was almost like a, they tried to describe her as a sharpshooter. Um, yeah, she was, she was very prepared. Surprised mm-hmm. the hell out of Corporal Rachevic. Rachevic, oh, yes. yes. Like there was even this section in the book where Adams went through very, um, a good amount of details to make us understand how much time Lena dedicated to learning how to shoot guns. Yeah. So when her sister died, other people grieve, Other some people eat, some people get depressed. She's like, I'm going to the gun range every fucking day. Mm-hmm. And I'm shooting 52 cards every fucking day <laughs> because I'm about to learn. Yes. Yes. Well, and not just that, you know, he was a police officer. So she had to be on top of her game. She couldn't just oh, be playing God. around with like me, <laughs> you know, no. like her killer was an officer no, who was trained in this. So she had to. And it was an, ex, you know, we found out it was a very expensive um, hobby. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bullets aren't cheap. Yeah. I mean, and she trained herself so well. Like she's able to shoot with the other hand. She can stand there with the gun in her hand for a long time. Yeah. She was feeling fatigue a little bit, but she. No, she kept. And not up. only that, her, her, she was very aware of her surroundings. Like she could tell when um, Ray, Ray, is that his name? Yeah. Ray would move. Or, yeah. He or, was getting closer that 10 yes. feet mark or, you know, he was getting closer because he was slowly inching up on her Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. or like when he kind of moved to the side a little bit or she's like there were a couple of parts where you know he would say something to her and she's like basically bullshit like I don't believe you like you are lying you are trying me right now (laughs) right you are that's a that's a scare tactic that's a um you know you're trying to deter yeah she she was ready for everything she was ready for all the bullshit 
that he was ready, he was going to give her. So I do give her credit with that. And she was a little bitty thing. You know, she was a tiny little girl or woman, excuse me. She was what, 24, 23, 24, tiny holding that gun. And I will give uh, Adam's credit with that, that the description that he used with her skill set versus her, um, her size, yeah, you know, did make her kick ass. So yes, her, her stature really had him fooled. And that's like a weapon in itself because people automatically think you aren't going to do a thing. No. Right. Cause he was what, like basically the incredible hawk versus an ant. He He's was, yeah, he was over two fifty, over six feet. Mm-hmm. Um, he wasn't in the greatest shape, but you know, it, it was often referenced that he could, he could snap her in half. Yeah. All he needed to do basically was to get, be able to get on his feet and charge her and it was over. Yeah. And that's how she kind of like gauged, you know, how far she needed to stay away from him. You know, she was trying to make sure he got those cuffs on, you know, she was trying to do her due diligence to kind of make sure he couldn't get the upper hand on her. Yeah. You know, constantly thinking, Mm -hmm. constantly thinking like, wait a minute, he just, he just said that. And when he said that he moved forward, he might have a gun on his ankle. Yeah, it was, it was a, it was a cat and mouse, but it was a snooze fest though. It was. And what made it a snooze fest. So those parts, those live action parts between, you know, Lena and, uh, you know, Ray, or, you know, she called him Ray for most of the book. (laughs) Yeah, she didn't call him by his official uh title. She just started calling him, yeah, corporal. She just started calling him Ray, like bump that. Um, so those live action moments were the best parts, I think. Yeah. The other parts that made it slow, I think, was the way the author decided to reveal the story. So let's talk about all the different things that were (laughs) so we had a blog post that was written present day by lena Mm -hmm. where she's explaining to her readers this mission she's going on yeah and then right after that we'd have another type of blog post that is like a story being told from cambry's point of view like her murder was being written out diary style yeah and Lena wrote it. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, okay. Right. Yeah. I don't know about you, but while listening, I was like, okay, is this, I wasn't sure. Was it something from the dead? Did she send her recording at first? I was not sure how this was happening, but it was very strange audio wise to all of a sudden, because I don't, I don't, remember but I believe when that part came in where we're hearing Cambry's story we weren't forewarned forewarned that you know Mm -hmm. that this is um, a blog that I'm telling this from um, a confession from Corporal Rayovich it's just all of a sudden and I'm like okay is this girl right in a diary and her sister she did she kept journals you remember? And it was, you know, she had all these journals and she wrote and drew. So that's what I thought that maybe she was reading from a journal. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's See, what I thought I, when it first came. When okay. that voice of hers came across the, the audio. Okay. I can see that. Um, but I kind of just assumed she was, and she did kind of indicate she was going off of the police reports because she read all of them through and through over and over. Yeah. And I know she was taking some of it from the journals. So she was trying to like play, you know, 48 hours or whatever. And she was mm-hmm. trying to piece together what happened based on the information that was available to her. Right. And she was so insistent that Corporal Ray, Ray, Rayovich, Rayovich, I know, was the killer. <laughs> Ray, Ray, <laughs> Ray, was Ray. The killer. <laughs> I'm that sorry, she, but that sounds like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> but she was so convinced. She like, I'm about to get a confession on tape. Yeah, she was. She was. There was no deterring this woman. She knew without a shadow of a doubt that this man 
had killed her sister. So, you know, it was just like, okay, is there a mystery? Mm, maybe more no. thriller. Yeah, it was probably more thriller. Yeah, I mean, the mystery... And sometimes, like, we just read a book where it really wasn't a mystery, but we really liked it. We knew what happened. Mm -hmm. We knew. But in this case, we we had some assumptions made based off of how strong Lena was acting about everything. And she pretty much did have it down. She pretty much did. But she missed, you know, as we get to the end and, like, the truth comes stumbling out, you know, there are some key things that she missed, but bottom line is <laughs> we knew he killed her. He killed her or, or he, was, he, or he was complacent in the, yeah. the death of Lena. Yes. You know? Um, so yeah, it was, it was just a weird, Taylor did a, a weird thing with this book. <laughs> It was his writing was very, yeah, it was a very weird journey. Um, and like I, we've we've read stories with different points of view. We've read stories that had podcasts. I'm not sure about blog posts, but blog posts, podcasts, they're all kind of similar in nature. But this was just very odd to go from, yeah. you know, um, because she was basically telling the story. From her confession, it was almost like, was it, and maybe I'm just confused. It was futuristic, right? Because she, even though she was recording everything and it was, it was going to be what it was posting in the future, right? Okay. So leading up, up to a certain point, she had the blog post even said, okay, after this, I'm leaving. I had this dream. Remember that last scene? It was like, I had this dream about my sister mm. and I will go off and deal with this after I write down this dream. So right. up into a certain point, the whole thing she had written prior to coming Her to that to town. Him. Okay. And um, she had and there was a scene at the very beginning about her leaving a laptop in a restaurant. And we never made the I connection. never gave it a second thought. I never gave it a second thought. Nope. But the whole time she's going through all this stuff, the girl's smart. She had a old school recorder. Yeah. And that's another thing that disarms him. You got this stupid recorder, really? Right. I'm gonna destroy <laughs> that. Right. I need to smash. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He um, she she fooled the heck out of him. Yeah, because then she had like a transmitter on it that was recording everything at the same time that was taped to the recorder and it was going back to, to her, her laptop. <laughs> That's that journalistic uh degree. Yes. <laughs> Even though she was like what working in retail, but mm-hmm. that journal degree came in handy. She like, you can try to do something, but it's in the cloud. It's in the cloud. It's going to be auto-posted. There's nothing you can do. Nope. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she was. And I she... like that. That was cool. But yeah. Um, but yeah, up until then, it was like all past. And it did make it confusing because it was past, past present. So like the day before or a couple days leading into. Right. Her meeting know, with Rachel Breivik. Right, because even Ray said, oh, I did my research on you too. I read your blog. So she yeah. was posting, 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 and she was making assumptions about, you know, then she was posting her stuff. She was posting her sister's, um, prop, you know, how her sister died, mm-hmm. <laughs> like and in a story. Thinks, right. Yeah. How she thinks she died and from police reports and all that. And it was, it was just a very strange way of um doing the story that's how i felt that it was Mm -hmm. it was confusing at times it was um and and maybe because of the narrator um the narration because it was two narrators but at certain points they sounded the same um and even even in the story the way he wrote it, you know, it was it was the constant thing of you guys look exactly like you look exactly like there was constant repetition of words. Um, and it's so crazy. Why would if you're a twin yourself, 
why would you keep emphasizing that you're used to looking like someone else? That's not. Yeah, and that was weird you. too. That Ray Ray was a twin too. Yeah. You know, it was. It was just. It, I was like, okay, so why did you choose this dynamic? Two sets of twins, and basically, each twin lost someone, lost yeah. their twin. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was just a weird dynamic. I might, I may have I don't know. I was gonna say I may have liked it better if it wasn't twins, you know, both of them being twins. But it was it was just a weird way of of writing the story. It was confusing. Um, I don't know. Do you think it would have been better if we read the book? No. No. Okay. I mean, maybe some of the stuff would have been like italicized or. Um, maybe there might have been some indentions to show us the different parts, like this type of blog post versus that type of blog, blog post. post. Yeah, because they led into each other. Yeah. So it's like she wouldn't go from Lena's blog post into current action into story mode. It was like it would be her blog post leading right into the story mode. And it's like, but why? Like, there was no gap. There was no nothing. We just slide right into the other. And then at the end, it's okay, dear reader. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. and that's how I felt like I've listened this whole time. And then at the end of this blog post, then I'm like, oh, crap, this isn't Cambry or, you know, oh, this is Cambry's story, not Lena. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It, It really did begin to get really confusing. And I checked out. Yeah. I checked out. I was at the point where I just wanted the story to end. Uh, <laughs> Make it end, please. <laughs> please, I'm dying over here. Make it stop. But in, in the I only felt like reason- Lena, like a, the end this right now. <laughs> yes, man. Can I jump off hair prim, hairpin bridge? And the only reason why I continue with this story is because of you, ma'am. And shelf addiction and the, the listeners because I really wanted to DNF, DNF this book. Um, I was not invested in the characters. I didn't care at one point. Um, I didn't. I was I was just like, I, I know Ray, Rick, Ray Ray, whoever the heck he was. Yeah. You can explain that part. And we knew who killed her. Yeah. And I think it was, you know, and the plot twists were were just like, blah. Yeah. Blah. So, so yeah, it was very redundant. And the live action stuff, like I said a little bit ago, was great, but it was bogged down by everything else. And so the plot twists were like, basically, not that strong a plot twist. <laughs> no. Not at all. It was nothing that made me go like, oh, what? Yeah, that's I what kind of like. When I oh. read a mystery, that's what I'm looking for. Like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. nothing. I didn't get none. Like, that. okay, so the one scene, things got very weird for me. So when she ran, okay, so Lena is running away. And at first, okay, so I'll explain this little scene and then I'll be like, well, what the hell happened? So she runs up to this truck, you know, trying to escape Ray. She runs up to this truck. She opens the door because she doesn't see anyone in there. You know, like what happened? Where the person go? She gets in there. It's a freaking rattlesnake in there. That's trying to bite her. Anyway, so she's like trying to, that whole scene was kind of confusing to me. So she, yeah. And so she ends up getting out on the other side of the truck after the snake like bites her or whatever. And she slips on plastic that's lined the ground and there's this random old dude with a plastic hazmat suit on basically i'm like this shit just got very weird (laughs) that was one of the scenes where i rewound because i'm like wait a minute she's feeling vertebrae and i'm like yeah that's... is she feeling a dead person in this because it was a dark truck yes. it was at night and she's just feeling around and i'm like okay so somebody so the trucker is dead because no, she said like she's that feeling whole t- that whole time i was snake. expecting the trucker to jump out of the back 
and like yank her or something because you know those trucks have like a sleeping area they have a bed yeah there's a yeah yeah so i'm like well it's the whole description how taylor did that description of oh she's like feeling this stuff and her eyes can't adjust and she i'm like this is so ridiculous like and to put a snake in there come on taylor a fucking snake not just any snake wasn't he a boa? Was he a boa? Oh, yeah, a boa. It was a boa, not a, a rattlesnake. It was a boa. And um, yeah, he yeah lost, it was ridiculous. He lost some point. He lost some points on, for me on that one. I'm, I'm like, like, that was so... Any, it could have been the man had passed. Yeah, it was just kind of... I mean, honestly, the guy could have been in there and been like, ma'am, what's wrong? Let me help you. And then she just got been yanked, you know? That would have been so much easier yep to lure digest her, lure her in the back because she was beating on the the window mm-hmm. oh you know a, a nice lure but a snake a snake and not only this this snake lasted mr theo who happens to be the man who was in the truck he talks about the snake fondly i almost thought it was his damn wife because he called her that. kitty because mm-hmm. i'm like kitty I know. It was the damn snake. He was like, okay, yeah, she, so, she lasted me throughout a divorce. And I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, my God. So he look, is talking just, fondly. <laughs> let's just skip ahead just a little bit and talk about that snake. So there's a point when Lena, like, shoots into that cabin later. And he's thinking maybe his head is shot open. He's thinking maybe he got shot. He's like, oh, no, I didn't get shot. It's just like my drink that spills on me. But then he goes when he figures out his damn snake got shot. He's like, instead of screaming when he thinks his head is blown off, he screams when he realizes that the snake is dead. I'm like, this is the dumbest if I ever like. Yeah. Like I know I, and you know, and at first I tried to be sympathetic because, you know, I'm a pet owner. So if my baby was shot, but I'm like, it's a damn snake. I know. It's, and then I was like, am I wrong? Because, you know, people no, love their pets, wrong. but I'm like, it's a, but I mean, come on, Taylor, out of all the pets, you pick a snake. You could have, you should have picked a German shepherd. Yeah. But just not even 20 seconds ago, he thought his head was like his brains were oozing out. He thought for sure he was a goner. Yeah. And but he no, didn't care that, about that. No, because that snake had been with him through cancer, divorce. That snake comforted him. That snake like, was that there was through weird. all his murders who end up he end up being a serial fucking killer. Yeah. I, you know what? I would have even accepted more if the snake was a part of the murders. Like you let the snake bite somebody. You know, the snake had no purpose except for he was a buddy. In a... oh yeah, because no. oh, I forgot because sometimes the snake would ride on his shoulder. I was like, okay, you lost more points there, buddy. Yeah, you lost some more points. You really yes. lost some points with me there. And then there was this one scene where I feel like Taylor Adams was trying to compare how a boa constrictor like kills a person or an animal versus how you need to strangle someone so you don't leave marks. I'm like, right. what? He, 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 like, because he was trying to choke her. And yeah. He said, but yeah. don't don't, don't uh, yeah. crush her trachea or something because mm-hmm. they needed needed it to look like she was it was a suicide. Mm-hmm. And I was like, OK. But the thing was, is that she, it, it was really weird. It was, it, there was some really strange moments um, because if they did want her t- it to look like a suicide, but the girl, the girl chose to, in the end, readers, <laughs> listeners, Cambry killed herself because she did something. You know, okay. so let's, so my thing is like so say, did, were so were you guys really gonna try and make it look like she committed suicide? I wasn't sure. How about you? I don't know. I don't know. I I don't even know what the point of that was. Like, honest to God, if this guy has been um running around the freaking country murdering women, like I forgot what he called them, his ladies or some mess he called them. His, his strays. His strays, yep, you his running strays. around the country killing people. Your quote unquote, um, so, you know, so, what do they call it? Um, 
angel in blue is walking around, get disposing bodies and getting rid of evidence. Like, yeah. what is the point of that? Just yeah. fucking kill her. Just kill her and get rid of the body, just like you did with all the others. What is the point of that? It's so stupid. Yeah. But I, I mean, it. I you, and I at first I didn't get it. And then it's like, okay, so they were dating. Mm-hmm. And then, then it got really even, it got weirder after that. Okay, you were dating her. And then we got really convoluted with one of the women that her, his father had kidnapped and was about to kill, escaped, pulled a gun out on Ray Ray, aka Rick. It was just like, okay, I'm done. Mm-hmm. You're doing way too much, Taylor. You're doing way too much, too bruh. Too much. Yeah, and this- it's like, um, sometimes too much is good, but in this case, it was just unnecessary. He didn't wrap it up. Th- yeah. No. It, it, it wasn't, um, like, it wasn't cohesive. It didn't tie in. It was... Oh, let me bring something. Let me pull some th- something else out the air. Let me pull something, you know, like a snake. Let's pull a snake in here. Let's pull in an affair. Let's pull in. I know the affair part was dumb too. I'm like, what is happening? So, okay. Um, because even in the beginning of the story, the affair never even seemed possible because she saw him up, you know, burning those fires. And there was never, and I and I get the twist part, but there was nothing that even impl, implica, uh, implied that there was, that she knew him. No. But remember, that was from Lena's point of view. Uh, that right. was what she thought. She didn't have the truth. <sighs> I forget about that. In her, so right. in her opinion, that's where it started. She saw you doing something and you chased her. Yep, you're right. You're right. I forget about that. Shit. Yeah. Again, even if you try to trick me, that was some bullshit, Taylor. It was. It was. I mean, it was. And I'm like, okay, so Lena described these like Ray. It, Ray seemed kind of gross to me. Like he seemed gross. Kind of. Oof. Yeah. And so I couldn't even believe why would Cambry want him? Like he's nasty what? and he's married. Like I don't understand. But she was. She was a um a free spirit. Um, I dig at first because she was young and whatever, but this woman was opportuni- opportunistic. She was a, um, you know, she, she floated. I mean, how many boyfriends did, did the sister say? He was like, yeah, like 11, 19. 12. Yeah. Yeah. So she was bad boy through, boyfriends. Yeah. She, she was likes, running through men like crazy. And this man, raunchy guys. <clears throat> yep. And he probably provided something for her. Cause remember he said he found her when she was siphoning gas and blah, blah, blah. So she, here she has an officer who probably turned the other cheek, probably gave her food when she needed, you know, he, he probably provided some, some necessities. Oh, I know. But I mean, Ugh. this is how that woman lived though. But I know, I yeah, know. he was gross. Oh my God. So yeah, he, he was nasty to me. Yeah. And so to, I guess, make a long story short, she knew him long before seeing, you know, those fires. Um, She was just having an affair with him, like, for three months or something. He said it was some amount of time she was hanging out there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It had to be, like, three or four months because of the time from Florida to Montana and boyfriend whatever with the pistol. Yeah. So, yeah, they have been hanging out together for quite some time yeah and then she happened to oh yeah that scene okay so <laughs> all right let's wait hold on before i get into this let me see what time it is because it might it's time it might for be time for a break, break. <laughs> it's time for a break, break. Time. <laughs> we're gonna take a quick mm-hmm. break check out the sponsors listen to the commercials supporting our sponsors supports the show and uh, we will come back and i will tell you what i was gonna say stay with us 
Today's episode is sponsored in part by audiobooks.com. Audiobooks.com now has 175,000 titles and 1.2 million podcasts. New customers get three free audiobooks comprised of one premium credit and two VIP titles. Use our promo code SHELFADDICTION, spelled as one word, when you sign up at audiobooks.com. Again, our promo code is SHELFADDICTION. And we're back. I'm sorry, <laughs> Terry. Back. That sounded like some American Idol stuff. Like, okay, and wait to this commercial and then I'll tell you <laughs> the winner. <laughs> um, so she, see, okay, so how she finds, okay, so how she gets herself in this situation is they were out fishing or some mess. And then, and the details here, I'm lacking because it didn't, it didn't gel for me the way it should have, but essentially he was distracted because his father had kidnapped a woman and then killed the woman or thought he killed the woman. And the woman had a child in the car and he was told to clean up and get rid of that kid. And instead he kidnapped that child and kept the kid. I don't know. I guess he thought he would figure out a way to get rid of him another way, you know, to let him go or raise him with um, Cambry. All yeah. this dumb stuff that makes no sense. Yeah. Like you have a wife. How are you going to explain that? And where'd this kid come from? So he wasn't really thinking. No. And so he goes back, you know, he, I guess he figures he has to get rid of this child and he goes and he, I guess he's like at his truck or something, but the woman wasn't dead. The woman is like, where's my child? <laughs> She's threatening him and Camry sees it and freaking takes her out. She kills the woman. She kills her. Like, I mean, right. She doesn't know. She thinks you're she about to kill know. my man. She's like yeah. Bonnie and Clyde up in here. Like, oh. So she killed a woman. Yeah. Get up well, to the truck look in the truck and like oh shit what is going on here (laughs) she sees there's some weird shit going on here yeah all creepy as hell well i think he said like the dad was a drunk and probably didn't lock the woman up and she got away yes oh but yeah dumb shit (sighs) and then what does ray do oh hun I have to tell you something, but guess what? We can be partners in this. You can help me clean up behind my crazy pops. It's good. And she like, I need to go think about this. <laughs> While listening to this book, and I know you didn't watch the show, but um, it reminded me a lot of the TV series, The Big Sky, mm-hmm. which is a was just based on a book by CJ Box, I believe is his name. And it was on channel seven and it was a little bit, I mean, it wasn't a father son duo, but it was a cop trucker duo who were killing, were kidnapping women. Mm-hmm. And I think they were trying to sell them into like a slave trade, you know, a mm-hmm. sex slave, sex trade, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But some women died, but I was just like, wow, this reminds me of um, big sky, but mm-hmm. yeah, but it was, it was very weird. The, the serial killer, plastic man my father who was doing this for you and i was yeah it was (laughs) it was getting it was getting weirder the closer we were getting to the end of this story it was almost as if his publisher or somebody was like okay taylor we need you to wrap this shit up yeah come on now it it was so far-fetched and you know like i love when a thriller is very realistic like with next no exit yes i can imagine someone being stranded at a rest stop in the middle of the winter yeah yes i can imagine a girl there walking outside and and seeing a girl in a in a, in a van yeah. <laughs> yeah i can imagine those things but this just seemed too Our far best. gone like the yeah. more he started trying to add to the story the more crazy it sounded it did it was like let me i gotta add this in there and i gotta add that and, and i think it could have been if it was simpler it may have mm-hmm. been a better story but he just went it, it was like a tall tale 
Mm-hmm. It you know it was Jack and the Beanstalk and Jack. It was just out there. I think he could have deleted Cambry's point of view altogether. Like that storytelling, he could have deleted altogether, and he could have just had. Lena in an investigative situation where she's saying, this is what I think happened. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah. Not this. This is what I think happened. And now I'm going to tell you the story. Like you can't visualize it for yourself. You're so stupid. You can't figure it out. Mm. Um, I didn't need that at all. And I also did not need um Cambry and Lena being strangers to each other that whole sister relationship was weird and I'm like well why are you doing this if you I don't know it just seems yeah the dynamic of it and I get that when somebody dies that you want to even it, it, it I got that part like we weren't sisters or close as we thought in real life. And I'm going to do some redeeming by finding your killer in the end. But yeah, to, to do it as a blog was very weird. She could have left, like you said, he could have left that out and did the investigative part. And maybe in the end, to kind of play that recording of what really happened. I don't know, mm-hmm. but it was, it was, it was too much. It was it was too busy, which is probably why I checked out. Um, and because Lena, my mind wasn't my mind wasn't connecting. It was it, it was pinging everywhere. Like okay, so I need to. Which way do I go? Which way? <laughs> That's how I felt. And what was the point of Lena telling us that story about her lying on her sister? Like you know, when they were younger she saw like an animal that needed, like it was hurting and she just begged her sister to take this animal Mm. out. And when she got home, she flipped the script and said she tortured the animal and killed it. Like what person does that? Why would you do that? What kind of person are you really? And then she's like, well, maybe she wouldn't have been that way if it, you know, maybe I opened the door or triggered something. And you wonder why y'all weren't close. Like that whole sisterly relationship was some bullshit on top of bullshit. And I'm like, it did not add anything to the story. I would have rather them been general, genuinely close and she trying to, you know, get vengeance for her sister instead of this weird relationship. I'm down for something weird if 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 it feeds the story in a good way. But yeah. like we were saying with the other things, it just added another layer that did not benefit the plot. I don't no. understand what the point of it was. Yeah, it wasn't. It it did nothing. Um, it just showed that the, the disconnect between them was even worse. And not only that, but Rayovich even confirmed it. He was he, like, he, that text wasn't even for you, stupid girl. And, and he said, she you. never mentioned you. <laughs> she never talked She never you. even talked about you. Mm-hmm. So it, it, you're right. It was like, so what purpose was that? That you brought yeah. that in, that this dysfunctional um, sisterly relationship, even if you did the dysfunctional twin thing, you should have just stuck to that. But it was, it was, it was, the dynamic was weird. Um, it did not, it did not add value to the story. He could have left that out. No. And especially she's having like these daydreams. So after it's all said and done, she escapes, you know, you know, she, uh, takes Ray out at the knees. uh, That whole scene was a fiasco. So she backs him into his car. She goes off. The daddy's still alive. He trying to shoot her. She tightails it back to take care of Ray. And the daddy's all pissed off. Like, how dare she think to turn around? I'm like, this is a fiasco. <laughs> anyway, so she does all of that. She gets Papa's the still alive. I forgot daddy was still alive. I was like, he was the faking the whole time. He was faking dead. Even after she shot him in the face. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That you got shot in the face. Yeah, yeah. But you were Ray, able. Ray was like, why did you do that? <laughs> After she shot him in the face. And she's like, 
uh, because I had a sixth sense, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and it was because then we could hear him, you know, in um, what's his face, uh, Theo's brain. He's like, oh, I'll just move really slowly. I'll just, you know, I'm like, this is so okay. Anyway, so you know what? There were there <laughs> that was some weird moments of that, you know, like that that um inner voice kind of talk. There were moments of that too. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, where in the hell did that come from? It was, it was, yeah, it was too many different points of views and it, it's like it slipped in and out of like being omniscient at some point. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, I'm first person. No, uh, I'm omniscient. No, mm-hmm. I'm third person, maybe. Yeah. I, I think, I think I did. Yeah. I think I texted you that. Like, it's just we. And, and the yeah. bad part is it started, it, it was from the very freaking beginning where all of this happened. I mean, I'll give you credit. You were consistent with that, but it was, it was just really weird. Like she mm-hmm. started talking and then all of a sudden something stops mm-hmm. and she's like, Whoa, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh God, this is weird. This is yeah. Weird. I would have preferred ghosts. Damn it. She should just had some damn ghosts. Cause it was I more like ghost, ghost like, story. Yes. Yeah. It was more like a ghost kind of feel or the way he wrote this story with the different points of view. It was more ghost. Like, yeah kind of like a riley sager you know that i would have preferred that that my sister is haunting me or trying to tell me who my killer is trying to tell me who her killer is yeah and then like at the end so after all that she's sitting in the diner with her gun on the table trying to eat some stupid sunday and she like basically falls asleep or has like a walking dream or something like she's thinking about that same situation with her sister but now her sister's like leave now go now and i'm like what the hell okay okay yeah maybe i could believe that if they were close again what does that you guys hate each other you barely even talked why is she gonna try to get you to do is it? it that twin connection <sighs> and i think it's the the disconnect that taylor didn't get in this story you know mm-hmm. With the, you know how they try and say that twins have this sixth sense that they can finish sentences, even though they were not close, she was still getting that vibe from the dead that my sister's trying to tell me something again. I would have preferred a ghost story. Mm-hmm. And in the end, Lena rescues the boy. The boy was, uh, he pushed him into a well, right? Pushed him into a well, thinking the kid would just die. And he didn't. He was in the well for what a couple days. He was down there for a couple days, and she found him as she was. That boy fell how many feet? I don't know, like fifteen or twenty feet or thirty feet. It was something ridiculous. And you know, and of course, Lena climbs down there. I'm like, she climbs down. Okay, okay. You just got beat up. You look in a mess. You almost died, but yet you have strength to climb down a 30 foot well or however long that was. Well, you know what? Now that we talk about this, remember I said I saw him at a um some kind of virtual event, and he described this character as being the female version of gosh. God, what was the name of that movie with um it was die hard wasn't it die hard and you was like oh i'm kind of good mm-hmm. <laughs> you sure like, did mm-hmm. and you're like i don't know if i'm gonna like that and i was like really and guess what mm-hmm. you are right <laughs> you are correct ma'am Oh, I love being correct, but I also hate it. I also don't hate glow. it because don't you glow I know. Over there, man. But I also I don't like it because I actually wanted to like the story. I did too. Like, I really did too. And I knew immediately that I knew before 10% that this is gonna be some bullshit. I was hoping and praying and I had like all the hope. Yeah, and because I, we I read was, to I'm sorry. No, yeah, I was saying um, I was hoping to because I said in my I did a reading vlog and this was one of the books and I kept saying, dude, this is so slow. You guys, I don't I'm not going to be able to finish this in the vlog. And I remember there's one clip 
or I'm about to listen to it in the car, I'm at like 48%. And I'm like, oh, something interesting just happened at 43, 48%. And then right after that, I'm like, oh, this is not that. It's still slow. It's not it's that still interesting. Slow. No, right. I'm like, oh, gosh. Yeah. I'm going to have to watch your YouTube to see like 48%. I'm trying to, I can't even remember at what percent. I think I was even at 70 because I'm like, when is this going to end? And it still wasn't interesting at 70 something mm-hmm. percent because it, I had got to 70% thinking I was close to the end. Like I thought it was like at 90% and they're still talking smack. You're mm-hmm. still on the damn street chit chatting with this man about how your sister died or trying to figure out if he's got, you know, that's those moments where it's like, we're frozen in time. You're frozen in on the highway or wherever they were. These long dialogues. Oh, fucking diatribe. Yeah, it was. And and throw in a wildfire, a fire, a fire is happening while they're standing there having this Okay, so we have a wildfire. (laughs) We have a boa constrictor. We have plastic on the ground because they think they're going to kill her and wrap her up. What else is weird? Um, I mean, just it was just weird. The, the bridge, the plastic the, man the, in the plastic. It was yeah, gross. It was just, it was just weird. I forgot about the wildfire. It, I it mean, was. And, and did we even tell you? I don't think we said it, but um, we didn't even tell you that Theo is actually Ray Ray's damn daddy. Wait, wait, wait. Did we even tell them who Ray Ray really is? Oh my God. So, oh my God. You, t- you <laughs> tell, you tell them. Um, so we mentioned earlier that there were two sets of twins. Uh, Officer Ray of Ray, Ray Ray of Vic had a twin brother and he had confessed that his brother had committed suicide. Well, come to find out Corporal Ray of Vic was actually the twin brother, Rick. And they, from what Lena assumes, he convinced his brother to kill himself because um, the brother, Rayovic, Ray was the weaker twin who did not like, because they were cleaning up after their father since they were young kids. Kind of like yeah. our other, st- we read another story about father and son killing duos, but yeah. Ray did not like it where Rick did. And yeah, it seemed like Ray was a good guy and yeah. he was a police officer and he was a legit good guy and he didn't couldn't take it anymore. No. And but, but he but, died before he got into remember he died before. Now both of them tried to get into the police program. Right. Rick failed. failed. Ray right. passed. Yep. So then their daddy starts doing this stuff and Ray offs himself. Yeah. Because he can't take it. Yeah. Rick assumes Ray's life right. and goes into the academy. Yep. So, yeah. So, Officer Ray, Rayovic. Oh, God. Those Ray two Rayovic. names. R-R. R- <laughs> it's actually Rich Rayovic. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It, it was just, just again, that was what plot twist number, is that 1.5? Uh, I, I don't know. It's just, know. It's just sure. it's a bunch of. Know. It was just a bunch. Of, I mean, if we did, if we had a whiteboard and started, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I, was, I, was, I just wonder. Like he was probably paid in advance to write this, and they were like, "Okay, since we gave you the money, go ahead, just hurry up and write this book." But after this, yeah. you might have to go back to your regular job, sir. Yeah, I. Oh, I agree with you. And I am thoroughly confused by all the four stars on Goodreads. I feel like these are like net galleys. Um, yeah, they are all net galleys. The couple of fives and the fours, they're net galleys because they got it from the publisher. Yep. And they feel like they have to give you a good review because they got it from the publisher. Yep. So many of them are tagged net galley. Net galley, yeah. net galley. I can tell because they're because the readers are tagging them in Edelweiss. Edelweiss and net galley shelves mm. is are what they're tagging these. And I'm like, you can't really have loved this book that much, dude. I know so, you could. It was have. it was too busy. There no. was like we like you. There was no the plot. It, it there. Were, yeah, and y'all, that is what's different about us on this podcast. We don't do that. I don't care where I get the book from. I will never 
hype up a book or give a better review because I got it access free. to it for free. Yeah. I will never do that. You send the book to me, you take the chance. You take a <laughs> I'm chance. I'm getting an honest review. Of getting an honest review. And you'd like to think that people would appreciate that. Yeah. But I can't, I can't with that. I can't even trust. That's why I don't trust the reviews. I don't trust a lot of people's no. reviews when they're tagged with NetGalley and Etowah oh, no. and, and ARCs because I'm like, a lot of people, like we talked about in the after show um, last month, a lot of people are so hung up on getting these free books, they'll do anything. Yep. And if you get books. great reviews, they're probably, I think you're, because um, I did NetGalley for a little bit, mm-hmm. but I wasn't up to date on my reviews. So I even just like dropped. So they were like, well, you got this book. Are you going to do a review? And I was like, "Mm." so that's what I got to do to get a free book. So, and I think like your point system or something kind of goes up. So if you're giving all these great reviews, you're going to get more books. And like you said, it's not worth it. It's so many other great books out here that I'll just pay. I'll just pay my scribs, my scribbed um, subscription. Yeah, my membership, my Audible, I will keep on going to the library using Libby, Access yeah. 360, Hoopla, but I I I stopped doing that galley. I never yeah. did Idlewise. Um, but like I you were saying, I'm giving I'm giving an honest review. Yeah. Good, good, bad, or indifferent. And you know what? That's another thing here. If you guys have listened to it, if you're brand new here, you will stick around and see this. But if you are not new, you know, when, when a, something is good, we praise it. We tell you it's good and why it's good. We don't get off on talking shit about the book. If it's shitty, though, yeah. we're going to tell you right. and we're going to tell you why. Yeah. So we're fair. If it's good, we tell you why. If it's bad, we tell, we tell you, you why. why. Right. Yeah. And I think we even even with the bad books, we still try and give you at least one to two things that we did like about the book. Um, unless it's just totally awful. Awful. Um, but, you know, but, yeah. you know, like we said, we like the strong female characters. We like this, you know, we, I that's like something that we, action. Yeah, yeah. But that, that's, but. that in mo that standing in motion for over probably 30% of the book where you guys are just do at an impasse on the highway Man, and I can just imagine holding a gun for 20 minutes to have a 20 minute conversation. Man, Girl, get out of here. I, right. Besides shooting a gun, you, you, the upper body strength that you have. Like, I need to go to the gym to work shit. out to do that. Like, That's what I was thinking. This chick got some arms. She got some right. guns. She got some man. Angela Bassett arms to stand there with that gun Girl, like that. She was basically counting down like, oh, she's yeah. going to drop that gun anytime. So the, yeah. and that what we're talking about or her standing there with that gun and watching his every motion mo- movement was probably 30. If not, would you say 50 percent of the book, that interaction between them two on the highway, uh, you know, on the bridge? Pro- it, it's not even the highway. It was the bridge. It was the freaking yeah. bridge because that's the name of the damn book. Yeah, it was 50 percent of the book, if not more of the book, besides, you know, the 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 blog posts. But mm-hmm. can you yeah. this is my thing. Imagine if this was a movie. They're on the damn bridge for the most of the book bo- of the book of the movie. They're on that bridge and, that and she's holding that similar. gun. That is what's similar. And I thought about that. Like he likes to stay in one location. Because that's what happened in No Exit. It was one location for that whole book, but it worked there. It didn't really work yeah. there. But in in No No Exit, it was one location. But she was in the bathroom. She was in the the parking lot. She was in the van. You know, she was moving here. Yeah. She basically kind of went from the bridge to the truck. Mm-hmm. Lena Cambry, you know, did a little more traveling, but yeah, he does. He likes one little location and plays mm-hmm. around with that. But this, it it was, it was just y'all still on the bridge. Mm-hmm. Y'all, y'all really still on the bridge or in a car? Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's do the narrators really fast. Then we'll give our rating and our recommendation. Okay. So um, would you like to go first or shall I? No. Oh. Let's let you go first. Okay. Well, okay. So the narrators, I 
overall, I didn't have a problem with them. I do think it should have been one narrator if that's how they were going to do it, um, because there wasn't enough separation between the two narrators as far as like I feel like one was used a lot more than the other anyway so I don't know why we needed to and if there I don't know I just felt like the way it was organized and produced I didn't love but I had no Mm. problems with the narrator's voices and performances I did bump up the speed to 1.5 I cannot listen to one it's too slow yeah it was it was very slow I started off at one Moved mm-hmm. it up to 1.5. It in, it improved. <laughs> mm-hmm. It improved the narration. I agree. It should have been one um, narrator because I could tell the difference. I don't know who was who. I, I really don't, except for, like you said, it, you know, when she would hop into the blog or in the blog. That was the only way that I knew it was a different um, narrator. Um, I may have preferred a male and a female. Mm-hmm. just for for ray of its little little parts but their voices nothing irked me um yeah. nothing at all but it could have just been one narrator and she just could have she could have did the same thing mm-hmm. okay readers or this is so and so's blog my blog is this but again they were reading um his story so but yeah. one narrator could have did this yeah for sure yeah. Okay. So as far as my rating goes, I'm going to rate it a two. It gets a two out of five. And uh, I don't play halvesies over here. We don't do that. So it's a no. two. Yeah. And um, it was not his best performance, in my opinion. And if you have not read Taylor Adams before, I definitely do recommend that you read No Exit. And I strongly recommend that you just skip this one. It just was not, just don't do it. I agree. I was trying to scroll and find, because I know Taylor wrote another book. We thought this was his sophomoric book, but this is, I believe, his third book. Um, And while I was scrolling, I muted myself. But I agree. I gave it a two as well. Um, Because a three is is something I would recommend, not highly recommend. Or, you know, I would be like, I like it. I don't know if I would recommend it. That's what a three is. This, Mm -hmm. yeah, just just bypass it. Go straight to no exit. If you, uh, yeah, this, it was too much. Um, Yeah. I'm not sure what happened, Taylor. um, But no. Bypass. Yeah. I'm not even sure if I want to go read his older things this is my thought and then I I know our time is up I want him to I want to root for him I mean we've rooted for or we've tried with Riley he knows how to write a female character that's why I'm rooting for him like come on Taylor come back Yeah. And he was successful in that this time around as well. Yeah. I was able to disassociate him from these characters. I didn't feel like I was reading a man writing for a woman. Yeah. So he is good at that. And that is is. rare. Yeah. That is very rare for a male author. And you know what? He wrote four books. Mm. Four Mm. books. This was the lowest one. Out of all his books, I see a 3.55. And this is the thing, like, I know when we picked this book, Mm -hmm. I believe the rating was higher than 3.55 because I don't think we would have picked this book. No, we picked it like almost two months ago. So more people have read it since then. Yep. And the ratings have gone down. But yeah, Yeah. I I may try and and read on my free time some of his Mm -hmm. other stuff. I'm not. (laughs) You're not? I'm not. No, only because I don't want to, I feel like it's much oh, too soon. It. I don't want to taint, like, I feel like I, ha- I have to wait for some new material. I don't okay. want to go back. Okay. Because the other two were before No Exit. So maybe he, he hadn't found his feet yet. Mm. I don't know. So I'm not willing to risk it because I don't want this to be a Riley Sager situation where it's like, oh my God. I Riley just don't is to- pushing them books out like stair step babies man he has another one out yeah oh god nope i don't know i mean people love them they but do. we've had such a, a complicated Terrible relationship <laughs> yeah i don't know if i want to risk it nope. i don't know didn't one of our yeah. friends read that and she's or was this another one and she was like mm. 
I thought Amber yeah. did. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, I think she did. She posted on um, Twitter. Yeah. And I kind of tagged you and I was like, see, look at Riley. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. they're acting up again, but he has a fan base. Mm-hmm. And I think Taylor doesn't have that fan base like Riley does. No, he so. doesn't have the nori- noriety. I can't no. say the word. You know what I'm trying yeah. to say. Yep. No- he doesn't. Notoriety. Thank you. Yep. He doesn't have oh, it. But yeah. but yeah. Sorry, Taylor. Sorry. Sorry. Not sorry. No. Count on me to tell I'm sorry because I wasted how many hours? How many hours did you oh over the, the stats God. on this? It was like, what was it? Nine hours and yeah. 51 minutes? Yeah. Because I looked and I'm like, I still got seven hours. I got how many hours left? When I got to four hours, I'm like, oh, oh my God. And then three hours. Oh, oh God. Oh end, end it. Just take me out now. Just end it. Please. <laughs> In my misery. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, y'all. So that's that. Um, next up in uh what month are we in? Okay, in September, Lord have mercy. In September, we are gonna read The Escape Room by Megan Golden. Oh yeah. I so yes, and now if you remember, we did read Megan Golden before. We read the night swim. Yes. And we liked it. We didn't, it wasn't like five stars, but I think I rated it four. And I think you might have rated it four too, if I remember correctly. Let me see. Let, let me, me click on the, it. I can the look. night swim, right? Yeah, the yeah, night I gave swim. it four as well. Yeah. So we enjoyed it, right? So we said, let's give Megan Golden another go. And That's we will right. see if this is another situation <laughs> where we regret it. Or we love it. Let's just hope it. Let's hope we love it. Let's cross all the fingers and all the toes. Girl. Yes, please. Because, okay, I'm going to stop looking at reviews. Don't look. I'm not even Ah! looking. Don't look. Stop. (laughs) Don't look. Close close the tab. (laughs) Close it out. Close it. (laughs) Um, It's just like we need more. We need good books. Yeah, we do. So, um, obviously, if you guys have a recommendation, for us let us know join facebook group shelf addiction official give us your recommendations something that is a 2021 release nothing too old but we're down to check it out you know if it's something you just love you think we would like it let us know we would love to have your recommendations love it yes and of course if you join us on facebook we can talk to you about the book in book club yay i love book club yes um because we even get more because i like hearing more points of view you know what i'm saying and that adds even more to the conversation because we i feel we have a great fun conversation about it but just to hear a few more points of view on it yeah. it may ease my dislike a little bit or not <laughs> i have been swayed mm-hmm. so or just thought like oh i never thought of that yeah yeah again that's why i love book club yes same yep all right so i guess that's it for today guys um if you're listening to the sound of my voice right now i appreciate you for listening to the entire episode yes because you know i respect your time so thanks for listening and of course like i just said you can find us both in shelf addiction official and online the links are in the show notes and uh we'll catch you next month Until next time, happy reading. Take care of yourselves. Bye, guys. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review or like this episode on your favorite podcast player. It seems so simple, but it really helps me out. You can share this podcast with other book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. You can also join the Shelf Addiction Patreon family. For as little as $2 a month, you will help us produce even more awesome content for your ears. You can also consider joining the Shelf Addiction official Facebook group where we talk all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. You can also reach us via email at info at shelfaddiction.com. Thank you for listening.
There's no debate. Americans want investments in clean energy to create millions of good paying jobs and help solve the climate crisis. And they want big corporations and the wealthy to pay their fair share. That's what Biden's Build Back Better plan would do. Millions of jobs, a clean energy future, and not a penny more in taxes for 99% of Americans. The clean energy future we want can be ours if Congress acts now.